Hey y'all, this is Ginger DeVries, guest number 56 of the podcast encouraging you today to use your position to broadcast God's love. All things work together for the good to those who love God and to those who's called according to his purpose. God has sent Jesus to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives. Freedom, my friends. That season may not be the thing that you wanted necessarily, but God needs you to learn something. Hindsight with God, you understand, but in the middle of stuff, you just gotta hang on and trust Him. We're not supposed to do for God, we're supposed to be for God. The doing is a side effect. Mm -hmm. God is able to bless you abundantly. If He can take care of the birds of the air and the flowers of the field, so more can He do for you. It's all going to work together for your good. If you love God, you just continue to stay humble, seek God, and it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. God's word says, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. We pray this episode is an encouragement to you to go out and use your position to broadcast his love. From Scotto Albritton Studios, here's your host, Ricky. Hey everyone, and welcome to Broadcast His Love. This is a podcast where we talk about what life looks like when we decrease our name and increase God's name because it's all about Jesus, living life on purpose for Him. And we have a return guest on. Her name is Heather Holloman. She wrote the book Scent, which we had her on before. Her and her husband, Ashley Holloman, wrote Scent, which is talking about living a life that invites others to Jesus. And then the next book that we have you on for is The Six Conversations, Pathways to Connecting in an Age of Isolation and Incivility. How are you, Heather Holloman? Well, I am doing great and I am so excited to be with you, Ricky, because you are so joyful. Even your voice makes me happy and makes me have more energy because God's love just flows through you. So it's an honor to be on your podcast today. Oh, thank you so much for being here. The last time we had you on, I had so much good feedback about how people were applying the message that you had in the scent book to their lives to see their lives as being on mission and wherever they were going Um, That was where God was sending them and he had a purpose for them and a plan for them in that. So just thank you for writing that book. And now on to this new book. I have so many questions about it because it will transform your conversations because if you do what you're saying in this book, you're going to bless other people, right? Yes. Yes. You said it. You said it right. That's perfect. Well, and the thing is, is it's six principles and the principles are really good. Um, Do you mind kind of walking us through the six principles? And if you want to share just a little bit about how God led you to these six principles, that would be awesome. Well, yes. After we wrote the book Sent, my husband and I noticed that a lot of people were saying, we really do love to talk about our faith, but could you go back a step before because everyone's sort of forgotten how to have a conversation in general, much less talk about our faith. So that was motivating me to write, but also the epidemic of loneliness on college campuses. I was also reading all the health studies about the effects of chronic loneliness. And so my heart was just really stirred to help people experience deep belonging. Mm -hmm. So as I wrote this book, it was actually my husband, Ash, who came to find me. I was in the bedroom. I was reading my Bible and he said, Heather, our grad students, they're saying that they need help having conversations. And he says, you know, it's so easy. You could just think of the six dimensions of what it means to be human and always ask questions in those categories. So you'd never get lost in conversation again. And the six categories he said were every person you see is social, meaning they have friends. You can always ask people, who have you been hanging out with? Mm -hmm. They're physical, meaning everyone has bodies and spaces. So you can always ask people, you know, hey, how are you sleeping? How's your body feeling? People love talking about their bodies and spaces. Teens love it when you ask, like, tell me about your room. Like, have you added anything to your dorm room? We're all emotional. We're cognitive, meaning everyone has things they're thinking about. We're volitional, meaning the choices that we make. You can always ask someone about their upcoming decisions or a recent decision they made. And we're spiritual. Okay. So asking people about their relationship with God. Those are the six pathways of connection. But the book really talks about the mindsets that you need in order to have a loving connection with someone. Yeah, I 
love these questions. It's so funny because I keep hanging on to a couple of them and I'll just like keep asking people when I see them like the same question. Okay. Which ones you got to tell me what were your favorite? Okay. So one of the questions in here asked people to ask what they're creating, like to dig into their life in the aspect of like, what are they doing? And I was, so I've been asking people, I'm like, what are you creating? And it's like, they answer me. I mean, I have a lot of yeah. creative friends, so that's, you know, that works, but it, I'm like, what are you creating? And then I'm like, okay, how do I remember the other things? The physical one, that one threw me. Cause I'm like, at first I was resistant to it. And then you had a, a part in the book where it said, you write down social, physical, emotional, cognitive, but uh, is it volitional? Is that how you volitional. Say it? volitional? Volitional is human volition. It okay. means the choices you make. Like you have human volition. You can make choices. Okay. And for you all listening, Heather is a professor. Like you're an English writer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Professor, Big words. Right? Big okay. words, Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm like, okay, I struggle. I struggle. Hey, when I'm weak, God is strong and he brings sisters in Christ to help me. So I'm all in for <laughs> Listen, you teach it. me Thank so you. much. I you don't even worry. I'm learning so much from you. So, okay. Oh, yes. God bless you. And then the spiritual. But yeah, so the one that I was like physical, you know, I was resistant to it at first. Then I wrote down what I would like someone to ask me about physical, and I'm like, "Oh my goodness, this is like re- it, this could really mean something to me. Like, how are you feeling?" Um I, I, I wrote down like my outfit, you know, I want people to be like, Oh, I like your shirt. You know, it's I know. So weird. Yeah. Tell me the story about where you got that skirt. People yeah. love it. When you ask them about their bodies, you know what my teen daughter told me your listeners what? are going to love this. If yes, ever yes. you don't know what to ask a young person, they love it when you compliment something related to their appearance. And then you ask them, how did you get it that way? <sighs> So if you see someone with great hair, say, oh my gosh, I just have to say your hair looks awesome. How did you get it that way? You will learn more about products and their hair care rituals. Also skin, if their skin looks great. My daughter was saying, ask about skincare rituals. All of us are obsessed with our skincare routine and our routines at night and like what we do for this. And especially clothes, their shoes. If you say, I love those shoes, you know, you got to tell me the story about where you got those shoes. You're going to always have fun conversations with people and not be, not to be afraid to ask about the physical. If you are curious about people and believe the best about them, they are going to love your questions and answer them. Amen. Amen. The fact that you're just not asking, how are you doing? Like you can't ask someone that, but you're going so much deeper. You're asking a question with so much depth to it, even though it sounds so simple. Like, yes. what do you think about that? How are you making sense of that? Yes. What's your new goal? What choice do you have? What did you do? You know, what are, this is my favorite one, the spiritual question. And I'm, I know you do dinners at your house. Actually, our friends, we started doing dinners at our house after the conversation with you. Like, Oh, I love this. You have changed my life in so many ways. God through you, you know, but like, I just love meeting you and reading your books. Okay. Spiritual. It says, what are you thinking about God? It just makes you think like, what am I thinking about God? God, how are we? And then um, at dinner one night, we had some friends over for dinner after you and I spoke and we all went around the room and asked each other how's um or what's god teaching us and oh, I love that. it that question reminded me of this book and i'm like man it is so important that we're asking our christian friends spiritual questions about how god is moving and working in their lives you know i Totally agree. How many people will be in life group or Bible study or community group, and they don't feel close to people Mm -hmm. at church. And here we are all Christians. So one thing I love is if you're in a group like that and people aren't connecting or going deep into fellowship and talking about Jesus Mm -hmm. to do exactly what you did, Ricky, just say, guys, I want to grow and I want to learn from you. Can you guys tell me what you're learning about God or what he's teaching you or something you saw in the Bible? And people will open up. One time I did that And a bunch of people were like, well, actually, we've been really far from God and I haven't read my Bible in a year. And then they said, like, what do you do in the morning to read your Bible? And I went right into the rituals. That would be the volitional category, the choice I make each day. 
and how I read my Bible and things like that. So you never know what's going to happen when you launch into that question. Yes. Okay. These next few questions, I have goosebumps because for the person listening, you are going to be blessed by this, just this content in this book. Heather, you write about finding all in your day and going on walks in your neighborhood. And I follow you on Instagram. And I saw that you took these pictures of these two trees. And you're like, I like the shape of these. And for whoever's listening, you're like, what? Like, what, you know, what are we talking about here? We are talking about finding all in your day. And I'm just going to add this because God is awesome. <laughs> but- right. But like, can you talk a little bit about, um, it's on page 73 of your book, but you just were talking about how research um, yes. drew you to write about this finding awe. Yes. So what the research study I read was about people who felt lonely and disconnected and depressed, and they sent them on what's called awe walks. So they partnered mm-hmm. them up and they sent them out on a walk with the purpose of finding something that they could marvel about or really be brought to a state of awe, which is where you're really, you're really like overcome by maybe the beauty of something. And it's this state of almost close to worship. And what happened was, is when people do that, it decreases their loneliness, it Mm -hmm. increases their happiness, and they just have this sense of warm and loving connection with someone. So my daughter and I, we love to go on all walks. We'll walk around the neighborhood with the purpose of finding cool things to marvel at, whether or not it's a beautiful tree or an animal that we see or or a beautiful sunset. And it is the most joyful time of the day. And I also talk about my mentor, Sandy, where she will become so full of awe on our mm-hmm. walks that she will stop and literally sing praises to God in front yes. of a lilac tree. So awe is a wonderful brain state, but it's also something that scripture teaches about singing and making music in your heart to God. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel when I'm in a state of awe. And in conversation, you'd be surprised how quickly you can get to a state of awe. Like if I see someone in the grocery store and they say, you'll never believe it. I ran into someone who had the exact right information I needed for my son who was struggling with this thing. I'll say, oh my gosh, what are the chances? What are the chances? That seems like divine activity. You were in the right place at the right time. Isn't that just marvelous? And before you know it, you've got a warm connection with someone because you're marveling over something God did. How rich is that? I mean, this is great. Like, this is something we can go out and do today. Go out and find something to marvel about today. Like, go out and find something to say all to, you know, like, even if it's a tree in your neighborhood, even if like you write about a flower that your neighbor or your friend, Sandy, she like threw her hands up. She's like, thank you, God, you know? I know. It's awesome. Yes. I love that because it's so bold. And it's like, we should be declaring that like whatever is hindering you from throwing your hands up in worship to God, like surrender that, you know, just get connected to God in this moment and, or, you know, later today, schedule some time to go find something to marvel at. If you're a I know, planner, yes. you know, um, it just really rocked my world after that, because I started looking for awe in everyday moments and it, it just made me start living life more on purpose for him. And I, I just, love that. I mean, it was just such a great part in your book for me. Um, Aww. another piece you talk about at Camp Greystone. Yes. And I love that you were just like, I'm not going to complain anymore. I'm just going to focus on what's right instead of pointing out what's wrong. <laughs> yeah, it changed my life. I was a negative person. I was a complainer, a gossiper. I mean, I hate to say this, Ricky, but I also used foul language. I was, I cursed. I mean, everything about the way I spoke was not loving. And I just, wasn't mature in my faith. So I didn't even know how to have the mindsets of a good conversation. I wasn't curious about other people. I was self-obsessed, you know, I didn't believe the best about others. But at camp, it was just a situation where I learned about rejoicing and giving thanks in all circumstances. And at first I thought, oh, that's not biblical. That's just like the power of positive thinking. But then I thought, wait a second, scripture actually says give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And when I started to do that, I became a different person. And I also asked Jesus to change the way I talked and to teach me how to love people in conversation. And that's the summer 
I really became an encourager and I helped people marvel. And oh my gosh, Ricky, I had more friends than I knew what to do with. I I was no longer lonely. I was no longer depressed. People wanted to spend time with me. I felt close to them all because I was an encourager. I was, I had a joyful heart and I could share my life with people and carry their burdens. Yes. Okay. For you who's listening, you're going to laugh at this because of the way that Heather wrote this. It's so simple. You write, um, I learned to speak to others in a way that highlighted what was going right, not always what was going wrong. And then this is the part I LOL'd at this. I laughed out loud. It says, suddenly people wanted to hang out with me. (laughs) I know. I know. I was lonely, Ricky. I did not have all these friends until I started living this way. (laughs) I'm sorry. I just, that was so funny. You're like, Suddenly people wanted to hang out with me. I had more friends than ever before. In fact, people would say, I need a shot of encouragement from Heather. Like I was a vaccine. (laughs) I know. It's like, come on. I need some encouragement. People have actually said that to me. They're like, I need my dose of Heather. I need my shot of encouragement. Because so many people in the culture are just complaining and they never ask good questions about other people. I mean, how many people listening have actually had someone ask them a really loving question? curious question. My daughter goes to school with 2000 people. She says, nobody asks about her life. Nobody's asking about each other. They're on their phones a lot and nobody knows how to ask good, curious questions. Another point you make in here, um, it was talking about don't talk for more than two minutes. And I, I didn't mean to bring it up, but it's so good. It's such a good reminder. Well, I did that for myself because I would talk too much and (laughs) I thought, well, there's got to be a way I can stop talking and let other people talk. And it's a simple trick just even to know how long two minutes is. It's a really long time. Yeah. And if you're talking for more than two minutes, you're probably exhausting your listener. Mm-hmm. Two minutes is a long time. Don't. I mean, I don't think anyone should be talking for two minutes. Unless you're giving a presentation, make sure you're giving other people a chance to talk. That is so true. When I call into my work and ask a question... I have to like explain the situation before they can answer the question. And when I read this, because I know the other person on the other line is there to help me, but sometimes I can get long winded. Like it's, you know, two minutes I'm explaining this person's situation. I work in insurance. Okay. So it's like, I'm explaining their story. I need help answering this question. And I have learned if I want a better answer from my company, I have to keep the question at least a minute, like right under two minutes. Because if it's over two minutes, they're gone. Like their brain is like, what is she talking about? I think that's true. I mean, maybe that's why TikTok is so popular that app. I mean, you really Mm -hmm. don't, I don't know if you're on TikTok, but or Reels, Instagram Reels, you really can't go longer than three minutes. Right. And I've started to teach my students if they're presenting their research it actually can't be longer than two or three minutes for that very reason. People check out. They They're check done. Out. They're done yeah. after two minutes. So I don't have research to back that up, but I see it in my own life and in the lives of my students. And sometimes I can get bored or distracted if someone's talking for a very, very long time in conversation. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's just a good token of information to take with us of like, keep it short, you know? <laughs> Back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. 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 That's what you write in your book. Back and forth, back and forth. Okay. Is there anything else that you wanted to share about this book and just the impact it's had? Because it's been out for a little bit now. Well, the most, the most exciting thing I learned was actually how to listen and nobody ever taught me what to listen for. So when your friends are talking, you're listening for their core values. And I know that seems weird, but like, for example, when I met my friend who I didn't know very well, I asked, you know, how is your work going? And she said, well, I turned in this one project. It wasn't going well. Then I did this other thing and I felt like a failure here. And as she was talking, all I said was, you know, as you're talking, I can tell you really value excellence. And she said, oh my gosh, I do. You totally know me. You get me. So when people are talking, if you can see a pattern in what they're saying, or, you know, I have a friend, all she talks about is how exciting this hike was, or she was on the 50 yard line. And then she went to Jamaica. I'll say, I can tell you really value adventure. She'll say, oh my gosh, I do. And then you can move into any one of the six categories of conversation to follow up. But people feel so loved 
when you're listening to them and you're like, okay, I can tell. Like, for example, Ricky, you totally value learning and you value teaching others and getting them excited about what you're learning. I love that about you. Cool. Thanks. I didn't know that. <laughs> but I value I can it. Tell. You lo- you're such a learner and yes. you have to teach. And it's such a gift from God that you- I feel like you're someone who's probably always learning. Do you write things down in your journal? Like yes. what you learn? Yes. Yeah, I love that. Okay, you're doing the conversation thing to me right now. You're doing it to me. You're saying you value this. I love it. I am. And I also want to go to the physical because I'm obsessed with journals. And I want to know where you buy your journals and what kind of journal I should buy. And if you have any merch for me. Oh my gosh. Okay, y'all need to know inside that I'm like doing a jumping jack. Doing a junkie. I'm doing a jumping jack. Like this is blessing me. I buy all my journals from Ross because they're cheaper. Do they have to be spiral bound or anything? Yes, they have to Me be too. spiral bound. Why do you, why, why, why? Yeah. See, aren't you already feeling a warm connection yes. with me? I am. Okay. I okay. buy a spiral bound so it can lay flat in my lap because I like to have a cat, my coffee, my Bible, my journal. Yes. And so on my blanket that's on my lap. And so, and then I just love the spiral bound and I love it. I record things I'm learning in scripture. I write down that the people I'm praying for and things I'm praying for. So do you do all that in your journal too? Yes. Yes. I don't have a yellow chair like you do. I read about your yellow chair that you said. Yes. Um, mine's tan, but yes, pretty much the same thing except for Aww. we have a big dog. <laughs> Okay, I feel like you could be my sister or we're like the no, same person. I know, I know. <laughs> I I feel so connected to you. Every time we talk, I always learn something. I always grow in Christ. Like I'm so blessed by what God is doing in your life and what he's teaching you that it just overflows out of you. It's awesome. Okay. Aww. Okay. One thing that I did learn from this that um I for- I totally forgot about this actually. I flipped to it in our conversation, but I have been using this. I just forgot that it came from this book. It um has a couple things that you can ask and ponder um when you're talking to someone. Just will this question, will this comment, will this personal story help encourage this person? Will this question, will this comment, with this, will this personal story help us grow and work towards our goal? And then the last point here is going back to that marveling, um, going back to finding awe and worship. It says, will this question, comment, or personal story help us reach a state of marveling, awe, or worship? In other words, am I speaking in a way that adds to human flourishing by urging others towards hope and joy? Mm. Yeah, that that speaks to me. I know I wrote it, but I needed to hear that today. (laughs) Well, I forgot that I had read that from your book, but that's something that I've been playing back in my head kind of like a, I don't, I, I want to be like, it's the same channel as the Holy Spirit, but like, it's I like, know. um, you know, is this in, enri- cause you know, that's the fruits of the spirit, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. That's, that's dialing into, is this going to help this person? Is this going to grow fruit in their lives by saying this thing? So thank you for writing that. Well, You're welcome. I love thinking of being that kind of person as well. And it's helped me with gossip and negativity uh, to really pause and say, okay, why am I telling this story? Why am I saying this right now? So it's also good to help children as they learn how to be conversationalists. Oh my goodness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Say helpful things, say kind things, say encouraging things. Oh my goodness. I'm going to tell my son that today. Okay. Say that one more time that we can like if a mom is listening to this or an aunt or a grandma, yes. what can we say to our kids to do this? Okay. So when you're talking to a friend at school, always be thinking, okay, can I say something encouraging to help them feel hopeful about their situation? Can I say something that supports them in their goals? And can I say something that maybe leads us to worship? And it could be as simple as like, say someone says, I'm so discouraged about my math test coming up. Could your son or daughter be the kind of person that's like, you know what? I know that you've studied for that. I I believe in you. I know that, you know, just say some encouraging words or say things like, well, what do you do to study? Do you want to study together next time? That would be supporting them in their goals. Mm -hmm. And then marveling, I could imagine my daughter saying, you know, I've been learning to pray before I take a test and it really helps me calm down. And sometimes I really feel like the presence of God is actually with me when I'm taking my math test. Have you ever experienced that? And before you know it, they're talking about the power of God. So 
nobody's too young. You don't have to be an adult to have amazing conversations. I get really excited about what this could do for teenagers, especially because Generation Z is also, um, they're, they're older, they're the 18 and up, but they're considered the loneliest generation. So we don't want that for the next generation. We want people connected and having warm relationships. Well, and we didn't even mention this in the beginning. I'm so sorry I didn't bring it up, but Gary Chapman wrote the foreword in this and he's the one who wrote the five love languages. Yes. I asked him to write the foreword because when I saw the six conversational pathways, they felt like love languages to me Yeah, because I love it when people ask me what I'm thinking and what I'm learning. I don't love it when people ask me about like my emotions or about choices. And my husband loves it when I ask him about physical processes, like tell me about what you're working on in the yard or what your new work system is. Mm -hmm. So as you think about what other people like to talk about, it will feel like their love language. Like children love it when you ask about their friends or their pets. They don't love it when you're like, tell me your deep thoughts about God today. You know, that might not be the best pathway for them. Oh, that's so good. This conversation will bless anyone who listens to it. Like, I don't know how it cannot. Like, just love other people. Like, these are God's principles in vocal form. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. It's this is a way so to good. love people. I mean, this yes. is what I see Jesus doing. And you know how God is three in one, you know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He's relational. He's a God of loving conversation. And I feel like we reflect his character when we have warm and loving connection through conversation, it's a gift from him and it reflects his nature. So I get excited about that. Oh, amen. Okay. So to wrap up this conversation, well, first um, I want to ask you, how can we connect with you? And then I want to pray. So how can we connect with you? Well, we have, I have a new website. It's heatherholloman.com. It's been refreshed and it's much easier to navigate. And if you go to my book tab and click on the six conversations. I put up some free resources for you. So you can download the excerpt of the book, like the first chapter for free. I put up my 100 favorite questions and I also put up a worksheet for you. So you can think through how to have good conversations for the holidays. Okay. Well, that is fantastic because this (laughs) is airing holiday season, like right in the smack dab middle of it. So that's perfect. Thank you so much for sharing that free stuff with us. Oh, this is, well, I love being on your show and I love offering those things to people. So yeah. Okay. So there is a part in your book. It's page 49 of your book. I know the person who's listening is not like looking at your book actively right now, but the way that you wrote it is like a prayer to me. And I just want to pray this for you, Heather, and also for the person who's listening. So we're just going to wrap it up with this last prayer, if that's okay. Let's do it. Okay. So, Father, I pray that we grow. And I am changing the words, by the way. So, do it. Do okay, it. I love this. This is um, from the book. Um, Father, I pray that we grow in our ability to connect with others through loving conversations. God, I pray that we see conversations as a sacred space. God, let us think about our next conversation as a way to honor others above ourselves, to value others above ourselves, and take an interest in them to encourage one another, to demonstrate kindness and compassion, and ultimately to love people. God, I pray that we reflect your character in our next conversation and all the ones that follow. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, this is Dustin, one of the pastors at Grace Bible Church in Sebring, Florida. Thanks for tuning in to listen to Broadcast His Love with Ricky Van Stewart. I hope you also consider joining us on our podcast as well. Our hope is to encourage you, inspire you, and compel you towards a closer walk with Jesus and one another. You can find us on every platform where podcasts are offered by simply searching for Grace Bible Church Sebring. Again, this is Pastor Dustin, and I hope to get to connect with you very soon. Hey, this is Mark Stockland, pastor and CEO for Haiti Bible Mission in Jeremy, Haiti. If you'd like to follow along with what we're doing in Jeremy, Haiti, you can check us out at HaitiBibleMission.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to get you guys connected with what we're doing in Jeremy, Haiti and how you can partner with us to live the difference, to help empower leaders, to transform communities. God bless you guys and have a great day. Hi, y'all. This is Nan Charland, the owner of the Laurel Oak Inn Bed and Breakfast in Gainesville, Florida. You can find the Laurel Oak Inn 
on the internet at laureloken.com or Facebook and Instagram, Laurel Oak Inn. Until we meet you in person, we certainly hope you're enjoying life to its fullest. <laughs> 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 <laughs>